Well team, it's day 20 and Angular 2 has finally dropped, which means the whole CLI infrastructure has changed again with beta 14. So today we're going to dive into some of the new testing stuff. We're going to also have a look at a whole bunch of code quality metrics like linting and code coverage and the mocking that you need to do to work with that. It is going to be a super fun and quite challenging episode. You're going to love it. Well, it's day 20 and oh my goodness, I'm still catching my breath from the big Angular 2 code drop where we've now gone live on the released version and the CLI has been upgraded from beta 10 to beta 14. And you'll probably want to do that yourself uh, because the new version runs a whole lot quicker, quicker, has moved to Webpack for all the bundling, which is a lot more straightforward. But there have been uh, quite a few changes. I'm just, I'm going to link to the document that they have on their site to talk you through the migration process. But believe me, it was a, a bit of a procedure. So let me just highlight a couple of things that you will uh, notice straight away. Uh, first of all, you have to re remove all the module IDs that used to be here in your component uh, decorators. So uh, those things are now uh, obsolete, so you can remove all of those. Uh, the most vexing thing I actually came across is that the pack the public directory for your static assets has now moved into source assets. So all our avatars, our JPEGs and whatnot now live in source assets. Uh, a little vexing is they get copied across as assets as well, which means any links that you had there need to be fixed. But there's apparently stuff in the works to let you move that to the root of that um, dist directory. Um, so that is a fair bit of work. Also, the testing stuff is quite a bit different, but uh, we'll get to that in just a sec. Well, on today's show, I really just want to dive into a few little uh, tricky bits and pieces that we haven't covered yet uh, around code quality, uh, coverage, and linting. So first of all, let me just show you ng-lint. Now, if you've never used a linter before, it, it is basically a style checker. So it has a look over your source base, and you can put a lint file together for your team uh, so that everyone has the same kind of standard code layouts and use of spaces and ways that they pass parameters and all that kind of good stuff, and it's all super configurable. As you see here, there's a whole bunch of violations here, as uh, is often the case when you start running a linter. Um, people often use these on check-in, on git check-in and stuff to uh, enforce these kind of styling as you go. But here we've um, just started doing our linting. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of rules here. You might be wondering how to configure those rules. And that's found in this tslint.json file, which is at the root of your project. And this has all the different rules that you might want to use. Um, obviously, one of the ones we're um, smashing here is uh, space indentation and, and trailing white space. So let's just do the uh, ugliest of hacks and just uh, in fact, why don't we change the line length to 340? That will solve that problem. And then we say trailing white space, uh, no trailing white space is false. Uh, and perhaps uh, something else we might do. I think there was an indent rule, indent rule that I was violating all the time as well. Now these are things you probably want, you actually want to fix in your source base, but I just want to demonstrate how the linter can be configured and changes if there are particular rules that get uh, in your way. So. NGLint is now firing up and it's running that compliance check again. And once that's done, we'll see that this, what was a massive list of violations is now trimmed down to just the ones I haven't actually changed yet. So that's just the procedure for linting and that's quite uh, interesting to uh, get across and have a little look at yourself. So the next thing I wanted to have a look at uh, is really around uh, test coverage and uh, um, some metrics around that. Now you'll see when you open up the new testing stuff, in the latest drop of the CLI, it has moved to the finalized versions of the uh, testbed style of module configuration for unit tests. Now this is different to what we did earlier in the series. Uh, this is the new way of doing things and it's kind of interesting. So uh, rather than using any kind of global module stuff, you basically configure a testing module with just the components and providers that you care about. Uh, it's at this point you can also throw in some mock providers, which we'll talk about uh, in a little while. But for now, let's just have a look at this particular test uh, and we'll see that it fires up this test bed. Well, you might be wondering, well, what is that test bed object? And you can obviously go off and Google that. But one little uh, cute uh, hack is that you can go ng doc and type in uh, a particular Angular class and it will actually fire up a browser for you and uh, search for that in the Angular documentation. So you can you can go straight into this testbed class. You can say, oh, well, I know that there's a method called configure testing modules, and we can dive into that, and we can find out all the details of uh, how that works and what it's expecting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so ng-test, uh, super interesting stuff. ng-doc, super interesting way of looking it up. But let's now have a look at the actual testing stuff. I'm going to run my tests now by running ng-test, uh, and I'll find there's actually a new folder that gets generated here called coverage. Now when the test actually runs, we'll, uh, this coverage folder gets created and inside it is all the details related to 
what portions of my source code base are actually exercised by my testing. So I'm going to let that test run and it's now finished. And in fact, I'm just going to leave it running there and I'm going to go to Explorer and fire up uh, just into our coverage directory and open up the index HTML in here. And there we have actually our source coverage. And you see this is actually broken up down by package and then within the package by actual classes. So we see here that these uh, thresholds are lower than uh, we've configured to be a safe environment. And in fact, if I dig inside, um, for instance, our app feed feed component, which is one that we do have tests for, we'll see that while these ones are exercised one time, so there is something that's creating this feed component, that the constructor is actually being called, but none of these are, um, are being exercised at the moment, which is why uh, they're in red here. So we need to actually exercise those. So let's go back to our tests and start digging into the exercise process. I've uh, Let's have a look in our test. So at the moment, with this new test bed operation, we create a component, uh, grab a handle to that component, and then do our asserts. Now, I've actually added some stuff in here uh, for doing some assertions around the retrieving thing. So invoking our on init. So again, create a component. Uh, we don't need to, um, we're actually casting this to a feed component because that's what we know it's coming in, which lets us do nice completion things. Now, what we're going to do in these tests is we're going to say, well, we're assuming app loaded is going to be false uh, because we know that when we load this thing, uh, that thing is set to false. But once we, um, if we have a look, loaded is false when we fire things up. But then once we actually load this from our feed service, uh, we set loaded to be equal to true and we uh, sign our tweets. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assume that the tweet length is zero and then I'm going to call on in it. Now, that is normally going to go off and call our feed service. Uh, but of course, our feed service has HTTP dependencies and goes off and does a bunch of other uh, downstream things. So we're going to absolutely just mock that out with a fake one. So in our provider section, where we'd normally just provide feed service, like we've done user service here, we are going to say, when you need a feed service, I want you to use the mock feed service class. Now, our mock feed service here, if we have a look inside that, all that does is it um, has some static tweets that we're returning to our get current, from our get current feed. There's a convenience method on observables where you can say observable of, and it will create will turn anything into an observable. So in this case, we have an our array of tweets which are going to be returned as an observable array of tweets. I've also provided some retweet and favorite tweet methods that just push a mock user onto the stack. So this is actually not a great test because. Um, to be honest, you'd be better off testing the feed service. These component wrappers really do very little logic, and all I'm doing here is assuring that the uh, method is called when I invoke, um, for instance, ng on in it. I'm just ensuring that this uh, feed service is being invoked, which is a pretty lame test. But anyway, it does demonstrate the use of mocks, and I, that was the main point of doing that today. All right, so I'm going to save that, uh, and that test is going to run because I've already got it running here. Uh, at the moment, it's executing four of four tests. And uh, once that reruns, and now it's five of five tests, and I can go back to my test coverage report and have a look. And I'll see now that, in fact, the error path hasn't been executed yet. I haven't done a test for that, but my loaded path is being executed and my tweets are coming back. Now, knowing that they're coming back, let's now actually invoke uh, some of those methods, perhaps our favorite and retweet, um, just to make sure that we are, in, in fact, uh, exercising that class. I'm just pasting in something that all this does is it creates a tweet and uh, invokes the on favorite and on retweet. Again, a pretty lame test, but it, for now it's just able to demonstrate to us that that code coverage report is being called. We should see this increment from five of five to six of six. Those are all successful and I'll reload that feed component and I'll now see that these guys have been tested and invoked. So that's pretty much it for a couple of little diff different aspects of ng that we haven't looked at before, ng doc, ng lint, uh, Perhaps one other one that's quite handy is you can run uh, ng minus minus version, and that will actually output what version you're running. In this case, I'm running uh, beta 14. Uh, so that's going to probably change over time as these videos evolve. But there you go. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of those. Tomorrow, we're going to wrap up the series by looking at some uh, interesting emerging places you can go for finding out more about the latest in Angular and some good resources that you can use to uh, feed yourself to take yourself to the next level of this stuff. Awesome, look forward to seeing you then.